Today, I'm gonna give you the Burbing Hard test of watch quality. Let's go. So once again, my curiosity got the better of me and I ended up buying a San Martin watch. So for those of you that don't know, San Martin is a brand of Chinese made watches that are really copies of the best selling watches out there. So the company will straight up steal or rip off designs by Rolex and Tudor, and then they'll manufacture them overseas in China using Seiko-based movements like NH34 or NH35 movements. I think most of their movements are actually made in Malaysia. Um, and then they will produce these watches with stolen designs at a much lower price point. So for watch enthusiasts that are out there that really want a watch that looks like a Submariner or a Tudor Black Bay GMT, Instead of spending the three to $10,000 on a name brand watch, they're oftentimes tempted at buying the Chinese San Martin version of it. And sometimes on the forums and in social media, you'll hear people rave about the bang per buck of a San Martin watch. People will argue that for three to $400, you might get a good value because you're getting the look of a Rolex or a Tudor at a much lower price point. But are San Martin watches really good? Are they really a good value? So if you're considering buying and actually wearing a San Martin watch, I think the biggest hurdle is actually getting past the unoriginality of the design. I mean, you might get a watch that is maybe looking good, but no one's gonna respect the watch because, well, let's just be real, these are kind of copy designs and it's never cool to be a copy. Now for people that are able to maybe get past the idea of wearing a homage or a copy design of another uh, famous design, I think that you should still be able to look at the watch itself and be able to objectively say if this is a quality watch, right? Or is it a good bang per buck? So today I wanna to specifically look at the San Martin's version of the Tudor Black Bay GMT and assess, is it even a good watch? And so I've devised what I call the Burbing Hard test of quality. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain what these metrics are, and let's see if the San Martin version of the Tudor GMT holds up. All right, so the first objective test that you can tell if a watch is quality is the guaranteed accuracy of the timepiece. So when we look at manual or automatic timepieces, the manufacturers are gonna have a guaranteed standard of accuracy generally. It takes time for a manufacturer to regulate a watch, and if you're gonna have a guaranteed accuracy, um, the movement generally has to be more robust and of better quality. So these things obviously cost money. So you will oftentimes see higher end watches have a narrower window of variance. Something like a Rolex might have a guaranteed accuracy of minus two to plus two seconds. And then when you look at cheaper automatic watches, you're generally gonna see a much broader window. Something like a guaranteed accuracy of minus 15 to plus 45 seconds a day. A really wide window. This saves the manufacturer money in uh, cost for regulating the movement. Now the San Martin watch, I've had it for almost a day and it's losing nearly one minute a day. So the accuracy on it is complete trash. Now the next metric I look at when I'm assessing the quality of the watch is actually the overall finishing of the case. So when you're assessing this, you wanna see that uh, the brushing is nice and even. Polished surfaces remain polished. The edges where brushing and polishing meet are nice and crisp. I also don't wanna feel sharp edges on the watch case or bracelet. A lot of companies are able to save money by cutting cost in the finishing process. One spot that's usually a dead giveaway of cheaper finishing is usually the clasp. If you rub your fingers along the edges of the clasp or even the edges of the bracelet or edges of the case and it feels a little bit sharp, that's usually indicative of a cheaper watch. So when I feel the clasp on the San Martin watch, it is a little bit sharp. Another test of a watch's quality is gonna be the alignment. Is the dial perfectly aligned? Or if there's a timing bezel or something like that, is it uh, glued or snapped in to where it's in perfect alignment with the dial? On a dive watch, does the triangle at the 60 minute mark, does it line up right with the 12 o'clock hour mark? When watch manufacturers are putting these watches together, if they are doing it just as quickly as possible, oftentimes these technicians aren't spending that extra time 
to make sure that they are properly aligning the dial or the chapter rings. So if the watch face itself seems to be a little bit off center, maybe the chapter ring's a little bit off, or the bezel is a little bit misaligned, that's gonna be a sign of a cheap watch. The lower end Seikos are notorious for having improperly aligned dials and bezels. And unfortunately with the San Martin that I just got, the bezel is misaligned which is super annoying because when you're using that bezel, in this case, to time that 24 hour GMT time, the GMT hand, it almost gets to the hour marker a little bit ahead of when it should. The next metric that I use to tell if a watch is a quality watch is the action of the crown. So when you unscrew or unthread the crown, does it have that nice positive pressure when it releases? Does the threading grab well when you're trying to screw it in? When you unscrew the crown and it's in that home position, does it wind nice and smooth or is it all kind of gritty? And then last, when you pull the crown all the way out, does it have a bunch of wobble or a bunch of play to it? I really want a watch that has a nice, robust feeling stem. Now with the San Martin watch, in the home position, it actually winds really smooth. And when I pull it out into the next position, the date changes just fine and that 24 hour hand does jump correctly. It's nice and crisp. But when the crown is pulled all the way out, there's a ton of wobble to it, which is indicative of a lower quality timepiece. Now the next thing I look at when I'm assessing if a watch is high quality or not, are the features of the bracelet. Screw and links are gonna require more manufacturing than something like push pin links. A nice solid clasp is obviously gonna cost more. And then having features like a quick bracelet change system or an on the fly adjustment system like a diver's extension, those things are generally gonna cost a little bit more and so it can be indicative of a higher quality timepiece. And actually this San Martin does have a on the fly bracelet adjustment. And then last but certainly not least, I look for consistent loom application. Applying loom to a dial and indices obviously costs the manufacturer money, but I wanna see generous loom applied and I wanna see it applied in a uniform manner. If a watch company kind of skimps and doesn't provide as many layers of loom application or they do it in a shoddy and inconsistent way, that can be indicative of a lower quality timepiece. So having a lot of loom is gonna allow those loom pips and the hands to shine brightly later into the evening. And actually with the San Martin watch that we're looking at, it actually does have pretty good loom. And so those are some of the things that I look at when I'm trying to objectively assess if a watch is of high quality. And remember guys, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter if you buy your watch because you're a brand snob or if you are a value buyer as long as you wear your watches. <laughs>